Hey, y'all. Hi. So I have been really into wearing bullet lipsticks lately, like just really wearing a strong lip with pretty light eye makeup and usually a glossy cheek. I love it when these times come around in my life because I really love lipstick, but I go through phases where I'm more into eye makeup and I tend to default to just a lip gloss or a balm. During those times, I always feel a little bit sad that my bullet lipsticks are languishing. So now that the bullet lipsticks are taking center stage. I'm feeling really excited and I'm feeling like I want to focus on them and celebrate them. So in this video, I'm going to go through my entire collection of bullet style lipsticks, swatch them, talk about them, kind of rediscover some of them, share my reviews with you if you don't know how I feel about some of these already, and just generally get excited about continuing to wear them through the spring. If this is your first time to my channel and you like it, I hope you'll subscribe. If you particularly find yourself enjoying this overhead style of video, then please check the description box for a link to a playlist of all overhead videos. I've filmed quite a number of them over the years. Now, let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. Okay, so I've separated my lipsticks into three color categories. These are all of the reds. These are all of the browns. And this middle category, this is lipsticks that I would call pink, although my taste in pink leans very neutral. I think that some of these lipsticks might be sold as nudes and might actually lean more neutral on someone else, but my complexion brings that strong color out of them, and so I think of them all as being shades of pink for me. I'm kind of surprised that this is the biggest group because I'd say that brown is actually my favorite lipstick color, followed by red, and then these can be nice from time to time, especially if I'm trying to balance balance out a look that has other strong elements, but it seems like a lot of them have collected, and I think that that's probably just because there's more of this kind of thing on the market than there is of these kinds of things. And because of that, and because it surprised me, let's actually start with this category. My pinks, my weird pinks. Okay, I've tried to arrange them from lightest to darkest. I don't know if I'll have successfully done that because I'm just kind of guessing, like, based on what I know of these lipsticks. There might be some out of order, but let's just see how they look. This is Chantecaille Pink Opal. It's one of those lip crystals from Chantecaille. It's covered in little shimmery particles, and it has some of them integrated into the inside. I know that my friend Kaki really didn't like this. She felt like it was sandy on her lips. My experience is that the glitter that they use to coat the outside of of it to make it look really sparkly when you open it. The gold glitter, I hope you can see that there. That has a sandier texture. So if you get any of that onto your lips, you might be able to feel that. But I think that the glitter that they integrate into the product is softer and finer. And now that I've used it a bunch of times and that outer coating has kind of worn away, none of it actually gets onto my lips when I apply it and I never feel like it's sandy at all. I also just love the way that the pale pink reflect kind of lightens my lips, just makes them look softer and sort of blend into the rest of my skin more. I mean, this is by rights a balm. It's not really at home in a video about bullet lipsticks, but I actually just grabbed everything that's in a bullet format that I have. It doesn't fit the trend of wearing a bold lip, but it's definitely something I'm excited to wear for spring. This is Lisa Eldridge Velvet Affair. Definitely sold as a brown, right? It's like a brownie nude. That's what it's called on Lisa's website. On me, it's a rose-colored lipstick for sure. It's also pretty strong, contrasty, almost vampy color on me. A bold, matte lip for sure. This is the Chantecaille Lip Chic. This came in PR pretty recently, and I wore it a bunch of times, and then I decided to keep it. It's a really glossy yet opaque formula, which isn't always my favorite. 
and it's a pretty basic pink color. I can already tell I got the order wrong. I had forgotten how kind of light and bright this was. I don't know what I was thinking putting Velvet Affair right there. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention. Anyway, this is a bit out of the ordinary for me. It's not the kind of thing that I usually gravitate to, but I really like the formula. It feels nourishing, but it's very lipsticky. I'm just excited to get to know it a little bit more. This is an Estee Lauder lipstick that Becca gave me. I think it's also supposed to be a balm, a pure color revitalizing crystal balm in 007. It actually has some qualities in common with the Chantecaille lip chic, although if I remember correctly, it's not as opaque. Yeah, it's like a nice neutral rose color on me and also nourishing, but pretty pigmented. I actually haven't had this around in a long time. It was lost at the bottom of a purse. So I'm excited to have it back in rotation. This is Merit Baby. This is the lipstick formula that I have the most of. I really love it. And I actually have an overhead swatch video swatching all of these, the entire color range and giving super thorough reviews and swatch comparisons of them. I'll link that down below. Now we're talking when it comes to pink for me. This, it's desaturated. It's kind of got gray in it. It still reads as a pink lipstick or a rose lipstick on me, but it's just not as bright as this kind of thing. Seeing it swatched out there makes me even more excited to keep wearing it, even though I actually wore it pretty recently. This is Lisa Eldridge Velvet Sorcery. And like pretty much all the Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, it reads as a strong color on me. It reads as a strong kind of berry rather than a neutral or a nude. I also wore this pretty recently. I wore it in a video and I was reminded that I tend to struggle with this color. I tend to have a hard time keeping it from being patchy. And you can even kind of see that it's a bit more uneven, the pigment, than the swatch of Velvet Affair up there. It might be a little bit on the chopping block. I always struggle with it. I never like it as much as I do this one. And lastly, we have Merit Lavenue. It looks like a very dark berry in the tube, but because of the kind of chapsticky formula of this lipstick, it's a bit more wearable for me than it looks like it would be, especially when blotted down. It's very wearable. And gosh, it's the spitting image of Velvet Sorcery. I had forgotten that. This makes me want to just declutter Velvet Sorcery. I think I might go ahead and put it in my giveaway box and see how I feel about that because I feel like this category is too big already. And looking at them there and having struggled recently with Velvet Sorcery, this color in this formula in particular, and seeing that I have like a color dupe for it in my favorite form. Formula. It just doesn't make sense to keep it. So these are my pinks. I know some of them lean kind of rusty. Some of them lean a bit berry. Some people might call this a mix of like mauves and berries. But for me, it's just they're not red and they're not brown. So they're that in-between thing, even though there's so much diversity among them. Looking at them here, I think the ones I'm the most excited to wear are Merit Baby and this mysterious Estee Lauder crystal balm that's looking really appealing to me right now. Oh. Well, I had a little bit of difficulty getting those swatches off cleanly. So let's move to the browns, just in case the reds stain even worse. This is also the category that I'm the most excited to swatch. I'm a little surprised that it's so small, although I don't know what I was thinking made up my brown lipstick collection. When I think of this collection, all I think of is 1990 and a royal scandal. And these two are maybe even a little bit questionable as browns. So let's start with these two, the superstars. 1990 is another American lipstick. I think it's probably my most worn. It might be tied with Tiger, which I've put in the reds, but it's one of the top two Merit lipsticks for me. I just appreciate that it's not orange. It's not warm. I mean, you can really see it in that sheer sort of single swatch there. You can see how cool it leans. And then built up, it starts to take on a little bit more of like a wearable nuance, perhaps. Like it, it takes on a little bit more warmth in some places where it's built up a little bit, but overall it never skews orange. And that's what I love so much about it. And that's why I find it so wearable. This is such a great lippy. A Royal Scandal, the goat. This is a Gucci lipstick, my absolute favorite. Not just my favorite Gucci lipstick, but my favorite lipstick. These, I would say, are my two favorite lipsticks right here. During this time, since the resurrection of my passion for bullet lipsticks, I've worn 1990 a little bit, but I actually haven't worn a Royal Scandal yet. It wasn't with my other lipsticks. I had to go find it. I had kind of gotten lost somewhere among my stuff. So now that it's back, reunited with everything, it'll probably be the first one I wear after filming this. This is Gone Grage, which I still have mixed into my collection. And after that video where I tried to find a dupe for Gone Grage, some of you pointed out that Gone Grage is available 
actually on the Maybelline website. So there is some iteration of it. I think it's in slightly different packaging, and I don't know if the color has been changed or if it's been reformulated. I should probably order it and find out just as a service to us all. But for now, I still have the old one. As we know from that video all about Gangrege, it's similar in a lot of ways to a royal scandal. It's just got a little more purple in it. It's a little grungier. It might be a stretch to call it a brown. It's a grage, but also beloved. And here's Lorna Dune. This is obviously another Gucci satin. This is a great lipstick because it's a very pale neutral that has kind of a grayish putty undertone. So it doesn't go pink even on pale olive skin. And it is unbelievably unusual to find a nude that's this pale that doesn't go pink. In fact, I think this is the only one I've ever found. The only issue with it for me is that I feel like it makes my teeth look a little bit yellow. That's the thing that keeps me from wearing it. Unfortunately, because I love the overall look, I love the way that I look with my mouth closed when I'm wearing this. I usually actually use it as a mix-in. I'll mix it with other things to make them lighter on me to just give myself a little bit more wearable, less impactful, less vampy of a neutral. But gosh, what a great lipstick. So those are my browns, or browns and beiges, probably you could say. I'm excited about all of these. I can't wait to wear a Royal Scandal super soon. I actually kind of want to wear Lorna Dune at full pigment, full opacity sometime soon and just see if my impression of it kind of making my teeth look yellow, if that's something that's kind of been in my head or if it's an enduring problem. I'm excited to dig into these browns. Okay, the reds. The reds. Another beloved part of my makeup collection, the red lipstick section. I love a red lip, but I'm a little bit particular about the shades, the shade of red that I'll wear. Over the years, my collection of red lipsticks has kind of shrunken. It's become a little bit more edited, more minimal. And I like it that way, because in a sense, a red is a red. You know what I mean? If you're wearing a red lipstick, you're wearing a red lipstick. And so I might as well only have the ones that I really, really love to wear. All right, I put them in what I think will be a little bit of some kind of order. I'll explain as I go through. So Tiger here is a real brownish red. I think for a lot of people, this probably wouldn't even read as red on me because I'm so fair. It does. It is a soft, incredibly wearable red. A brick nude, a term I love, or a, a brick brown. Once again, because this formula is so wearable, so chapsticky, so nourishing, just the right opacity of pigment, but without ever getting patchy, it's just an effortless, effortless red. The Gucci Lip Voile is doing a similar thing. It's like the Gucci version of that Merit formula. Not quite a balm, not quite sheer enough to be called a balm, but not quite a full pigment, full opacity lipstick either. And this is in the classic Gucci Red, which is called Goldie Red. You can see it's kind of sheer, right? And this is actually sort of a blue red, like a bluer red than I prefer. And I don't end up wearing it very often because of that. And I just never get rid of it in declutters because it's Gucci and it's so pretty and it's so classic. It makes it through declutters as a no brainer without me really thinking about it. But now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, every time I almost reach for it or every time I reach into this part of the drawer, I pass over it because I know that it's just a little bit more blue of a red than I want. And I always end up wearing something that suits me better, like Tiger. I'm going to let this go. I think I can declutter this today in this moment of clarity pretty painlessly. Yay. So this is one of those ZC lipsticks. It's the one that I kept in my most recent and most vicious declutter. I just wanted to have one on hand. I actually really do like the formula, and I like this soft, soft, almost pinkish red. And I've kind of been forgetting to wear it. So this is a good reminder. Yeah, what a pretty color. Again, something that might be more of a pink on certain complexions, but definitely reads as a red on me. The formula is great too. Just very creamy and elegant. So these are three kind of off reds. Oh wait, I missed one. But what I was about to say still holds. So these are three kind of off reds. And now that I don't have this one, these are two kind of off reds. So I have a, a brick brownish red here. I have sort of a strawberry, almost pinkish red right here. And then these last three are the super saturated punch you in the face reds that I keep on hand. This is uh, a Gucci matte. So the other Gucci lipsticks with the elaborate casing, these ones, those are the satins. And this one with the kind of stride columnal casing is the matte. This is Janet Rust. A little bit misleading. I feel like there are a lot of rust lipsticks that are much rustier than this. It's a pretty square, solid, dusky red. 
And you know what? I never wear it because I always, when I want a really strong red, I always pick one of the two that I'm about to swatch. Those are the two reds that I really think of when I think of wearing a strong red, these last two. This one sort of gets left out in the cold. I don't want to declutter it though. I want to wear it more. I think it's broken off. Ah, no, Janet Rust. Well, all right, I stuck it back on gingerly. I might try to do some further repair work at a later date, but uh, who knows? Janet Rust is a little bit, a little bit on the edge. This is my classic red, like my perfect red. It's Velvet Dragon from Lisa Eldridge. It's described as being a very kind of cinnabar-y red, a very fiery red. On me, it's just real red. <laughs> like it's the shade that I need for me to look like I'm wearing a strong, flattering red lipstick. That sort of of fire engine color as opposed to like a cherry red, you know? And actually Janet Rust is looking a little bit cherry colored next to Velvet Dragon and I can kind of see why I always tend to wear this one whenever I want. Basically an opaque matte red like that. And then lastly, my last Merit lipstick, this is Cabo. It's the bright red from Merit. Looking a little cherry colored there in the tube, but it shears out like all of them. It sort of swatches a bit brighter. Shears out to be uh, what I think of as actually actually like the most orange of all of my reds. Red is such a great lipstick color. And I love that there's so much variety here, right? They're all quite different, but they all suit me. And there is a whole category of reds, those like cherry reds, blue reds, deeper vampire reds that just aren't here. Like that whole category or all of those categories of reds are excluded from my collection because these just all look way better on me. And I only want to have what I love the most and wear what I love the most. Okay, so there we have it, the browns, the reds, and what I think of as the pinks. I've decluttered two lipsticks today. I actually feel like Janet Rust might be on its way out. I'm giving it a little grace for right now, but it could go soon, given what has transpired today. Not just the fact that it broke off, but also seeing it next to Velvet Dragon and realizing that they're kind of similar, actually quite similar, but that Velvet Dragon is always going to win out because it doesn't have as much of that drop of cherry. It's just a slightly more flattering color for me. You know, I'm talking myself into it. Like, why would I keep something that looks almost exactly like Velvet Dragon, but just isn't quite as good as it? Like, why would I keep something that's so close and yet subpar and where the bullet just broke off completely at the base and is going to be a complete pain in the butt? I can let it go. It's hard because it's Gucci. It's so pretty. It's my only Gucci matte. But practically, this is so much better. And this is such a wonderful size of lipstick collection for me. Four reds, four browns. And if you take out the actual legit balms for pinks, it's very manageable. I can keep it all in my makeup mind palace and I can wear all of these. Like I could wear all of them within a month. I could wear each of them twice within a month. And given that I'm on this kick, I very well might. I feel like that is kind of what I'm angling to do in the coming weeks. I hope this was enjoyable for you, all of these little swatches. I will link everything down below. Thank you for being here with me. And I hope that you are remembering to take extra good care of yourself yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.